Hello everyone, my name is Stuart Robinson. I am the Outside Sales U.S. Territory uh, representative here at Bonatron. I'll be presenting today our line regeneration products. Also with me sitting in for technical questions and uh, tw technical commentary, I have Tim Olson. He is our line regeneration products engineer here. Um, so feel free to ask as technical a question as possible. You know, I'm a sales guy, so you know I'm not the most technical, but I, but I do have the guy here who made the product, so he will be happy to answer all of your questions today. Um, I stated before we will open up the floor for questions uh, periodically during the presentation. Feel free to type your questions as I go along and we will respond back to you accordingly. Um, <clears throat> and I'll begin the presentation um, right here. What you're seeing is our Bonatron location located here in Nashville, Tennessee, um, right next to the fairgrounds, five minutes from downtown Nashville. We will be talking about regenerative energy in AC drives and our line regeneration product that solves the regenerative energy problem that you see when motors are stopped, our speed reductions, it creates overhauling load conditions, which you will hear some people say regen, or you will hear say a rise in the DC bus. Um, you hear all different types of terminology depending upon who you're talking to or where you're at, but it is all the same thing and our line regeneration modules is a is a solution for the problems that will occur when your variable frequency drives are receiving overhauling load conditions just about all of our products monitor the dc bus of the drives so they we require access to dc bus terminals on the variable frequency drive so you will hear me refer that that is the same on all of our line regeneration modules. This is one of the rare occurrences in our products where we also need to pair back into the AC line in the facility. And I will show you examples of this. <clears throat> okay. As I stated, we're dealing with over voltage. And where you get your over voltage in a variable frequency uh, drive, normally when your conveyor belt or your crane, in this instance we're showing a crane application, when it is raising a load, it is motoring, meaning the energy is being used by that motor. When you go to lower the load, power, well, the load is pulling the motor faster than it needs to go, therefore virtually turning this motor into a generator, creating power that goes back onto the line. And right here is where your drive will be located in front of the motor. So it will send power back to your drive. This is where you get your over voltage faults on your drive, or you can get things that blow up. And this is where line regeneration comes in. So when your over voltage fault occurs during motoring, the DC bus voltage rises in the drive. Our, our line regeneration products will monitor the DC, the DC bus voltage. Um, the, DC bu the set point on a regen does not exist. There is no set point. Dealing with breaking resistors and transistors, you hear we, there is a set point. Um, for 460 to 480 volt AC lines, you will have a 750 volt DC set point. For 380 to 415, you will have a 620 volt uh, DC set point. That does not exist in Regen. In Regen, it is monitoring the levels of the AC line and the, the DC. So it monitors a relative rise in between the two. So if the DC bus rises to a certain level over the AC line, it switches on automatically. We do have a range of voltages that this will cut on. 
the range of voltage is around 680 to um, 680 to 700 is the standard that we say but there is no set point so if you get a customer who asks you a set point dealing with the over voltage some drives are going to trip out or servo uh, drives trip out at weird set points um, and that may be an occurrence there that you want to take notice of the second technical term that you're going to deal with a lot in region especially pertaining to your return on investment is going to be duty cycle duty cycle is dealing with the accumulated time of the total cycle of your application so you're wanting to know the run times the d cell times and the accumulated time of all and that is where you get your duty cycles and duty cycle is done in a percentage as you see here so um, for a I like to give examples for an example if you have a, a crane or a conveyor the crane may be raising the load for eight seconds it's dropping the load for a total of three seconds and it raises the load let's say seven times a minute so seven times eight that's should have did numbers that i could have done 56 and it's lowering the load uh an equal amount of times so seven times so you're lowering the load for 21 seconds so your total accumulated time you have 21 seconds of d cell you have 56 seconds of uh of motoring so that is 77 seconds of uh, accumulated time then you would take all of that add it up that's going to get you your cycle time then your cycle your d cell time divided by your cycle time is going to give you your duty cycle and that's just a quick overview of it um, if there are any questions you can feel free to ask more questions but I hope most everyone it deals with duty cycle who is on the presentation. But if you don't, um, in all of our user manuals, we try to give you the same formulas and brief overviews in the user manual. Feel free to give us a call here at Bonatron. Uh, me, myself, Derek, Tim Smith, any of the sales guys, we try to help you run over the application and get that appropriately sized. This comes in very handy when you're trying to get the customer a return on investment number with our savings calculator. So I hope everyone has a, uh, a handle on the duty cycle. So I have a small example here for you do, for duty cycle. Just a little joke there, just a little humor for you. And that was duty cycle if you've never seen it before. Okay, we'll be moving on now. We'll be moving on. Sorry for the bad joke, guys. Uh, this is a picture of we'll be moving on to our line regen. And our line regeneration models, we have two separate part numbers here that you'll see. Our smaller units are M3545 units, which are 15, 15 amp, 14 horsepower units. Um, all Bonatron regen modules are rated at 100% duty cycle. Um, so the, what that means is the capabilities that we have listed for them, either 15 amps, 30 amps, 50 amps, 100 amps, and we now also go to 300 amps. I don't know why that I didn't write that down. But it can do that all day long, 100% of the time, it can run those capabilities. The larger modules, the 30 to 300 amp modules, will be your M3645 module. The largest difference in between the two that you can see physically is the 3545 does not come with the optional digital display. Okay, it only comes with these LED um, ready, power on, the status, um, the status lights here. The 3645 does come with the LED option also, 
but the more standard that you're going to see is the digital display. <clears throat> All of our units are going to be rated from 208 to 600 volt AC with a 50 to 60 hertz auto select. So what that means is the, the line regeneration modules automatically sync to the line. So whether it's 50 or 60 hertz, you do not have to, or whoever's integrating this system and hooking it up out there, the maintenance guys, they don't have to go in and select that themselves. They just plug up the unit and it's going to sync to the line. Um, all Bonatron line regen, it has integrated filtering and transient suppression. Um, long story short, in, enclosed in each one of these units is a line load reactor. Um, with other different types of snubber boards and different things like that that we have um, to clean the line and the power that's put back on, into the facility, making it the 99% efficient module. Um, at this time, we now offer the digital display as a separate option. Have a lot of customers, one of the big selling points on the line region is footprint. A lot of customers like to integrate this into their panels, but they don't want to open up the panel just to look at the event usage logging on the uh, region module itself. So you can actually purchase the digital display separately as a kit and mount this on the outside. Of, they can mount that on the outside of their panel remotely so they can see the event usage and energy logging that you can do with the uh, with the digital display. With the digital display, I think it actually will save the past 50 occurrences that has happened. Um, so it will log if it's regen for eight seconds, 50 times in the last year. It all of that information can be found on the digital display. It's a very good tool for a lot of the PLC guys and just about anybody who really wants to see their return on investment. They can clearly see it right there in front of their face. We'll get into how it works. As we um, discussed before, the region is going to monitor the DC bus of the drive. <clears throat> then it's going to convert the regenerative energy from your VFD over voltage occurrence to AC. Okay, these are SCR based modules. We do get that question. Uh, they're not transistor. transistor. IGBT. Okay, I'm sorry about that. They are IGBT based. Okay, it's going to then and from the region module, you're going to return the power, the regenerative energy back to the AC line of the facility. Um, where they return that power is based upon their system. You do get some customers who have one motor that is in region at all times and one motor that is motoring. So they will run that up above the motor that is motoring to return that energy right back to it. But that's upon the integrator and the system. We can, you can just give us a call and we can help you out with that also. For this, I'd like to show um, we do get questions if you can use the regen with a transistor and resistor and why you would want to do that. Yes, you can. As I stated before, the regen has a, a, uh, does not have a physical set point of which it turns on. So the regen in most all cases is going to turn on before the transistor will turn on. Um, so knowing this, the region, whatever power that the region cannot handle will bypass the region and go to the transistor and resistor. We do have some customers who have a continuous load that the region can handle and they want to recruit the return on investment for that. But in emergency cases where they have an emergency stop or um, three or four times a day, they have to stop the unit. They're going to have very high peaks for a duration of time and they would want to use a transistor, a lighter duty, larger transistor and resistor to catch those peaks 
so the regen does not blow up or they get problems with their variable frequency drive. They'll put a transistor and resistor in this application and use that for peak or surge power. All right. One of our newer products that we uh, carry here is our regenerative DC bus power supply. Um, this is our M3645P modules. The M3645P modules uh, physically look exactly like the Regen modules, and they are actually the same price point as the Regen modules. Um, but, but they are, will save your customers a lot of money. The regenerative DC bus power supply is a DC bus power supply plus re, a line regen in one module. Okay, meaning as this unit will act as the front end power of your drive. Okay, there are a few things that we have to address when you use the regen DC bus power supply. You want to make sure that the drives that are being used with these um, M3645P modules have pre-charged circuitry. If they do not, you want to make sure that they get a drive. If they're purchasing a new drive at the time of applying this, you want to make sure that they purchase the drive who, that has that option. Okay, if not, we sell an M3728 pre-charge module that I will elaborate, elaborate on later. <clears throat> if you know our products, we also used to sell a M3713 um, three-phase power supply uh, module. Virtually, that is the same thing as th this combined with our standard region module, except you don't have to pay for the M3713 now. Um, we offer them in all of the uh, same power, 15, 30, 50, 100, and 300 amp, as we do in our regen modules. Um, you can parallel up to two of the 300 amps and derate your peaks for 10% to get larger um, power applications. It's the same thing offered with a digital display with the event and usage logging and same exact filtering and transit suppr suppression. How the regen power supply works is the regen power supply provides power to the DC bus of the drive monitor and monitors the over voltage occurrences just like I stated before. It's going to take the convert the regenerative energy from your VFD back to the AC line just the same. But you will see a big difference here um, from typical wiring configurations from the regen to the regen power supply where you don't have the AC side hooked up to the drive. Okay, there's no need for that when you're using the power supply. So that does take out some hardware for integrators that, that is no longer necessary when they're using our Regen power supply. So, so for everyone out there who is selling our uh, Regen power supply, that is a big selling point. Um, they will no longer need that. And uh, Tim is uh, saying, if you didn't hear him, um, that's going to come in really handy when they, you are common busing multiple drives. Um, and I'm going to talk about that here. I'm going to have Tim elaborate it on this more um, because I've been running into this where I've had um, especially some larger drives when you're using our 300 amp module. Um, just about every application that you run into, you're going to have uh, standard line load reactors on each drive application. And the, the regen power supply is now by when you have it as a power supply it turns it as bi-directional so you can also use our reactor that's contained with the re regen module as a reactor for the drive and i'll have uh, tim right now elaborate on that more 
Well, it really comes in handy when, the, uh, when you're using a common bus application or you have multiple drives. Typically, you would have to use isolation diodes or blocking diodes to keep the drives from having circulating currents between them. Um, using uh, Regen to act as a common bus supply, you don't have to worry about the diodes being inserted in for circulation currents, the extra reactors that are required with them. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so all of what all of that accumulates to is a lot of saved dollars for whoever's putting this system together. Um, and you really want to point that out uh, so you can get that calculated into their systems because everyone I've ran into you really don't realize that and that they'll try to put all of those things the diodes uh, most customers are, are especially if they're used to using a Bonatron common bus uh, diode module um, they're always going to ask you, well, I'm going to need the dial modules when I'm putting together this common bus system. And if they're not educated on it, they'll try to put everything together just like that. And it can be overpriced. Whereas you could save them a lot of money and win yourself a, a pretty large uh, bid if you educate them on that. And I know that was a lot, so I'm definitely going to offer that up for questions and if you have questions while we are talking feel free to um, put that in the IM and we will type back to you with those answers so I will open up the floor feel free to unmute yourself right now for questions on the M3645P and everything that we've talked about so far uh, the difference in between the standard M3645 and the M3645P power supply module. Okay, um, <clears throat> Mark asks, how do you feel about regen on crane applications where the power is fed via conductor bar? And it depends on what you mean by conductor bars. If it's being fed on a uh, brush shoe or a ring type system where there's redundant connections, Okay, we have ran into this a few times, so we will elaborate on what type of conductor bar brush. Yeah, if there's redundant brushes, there's typically not an issue with that. Oh. We've seen that on quite a few overhead crane systems. Is there any other questions? We do use these on um, quite a few different types of crane applications. Um, I think one of the only issues that I've seen is when um, the crane operator actually hit the AC line in the ground, and he wondered why it was a problem when he separated. <laughs> well, what do you sever one of the AC lines? If you sever an AC line with your crane, then um, these units are sinking from the AC and DC. So if it senses one of the lines completely disappear, there's going to be an issue. So you want to make sure the uh, crane operator knows not to hit the uh, power line. That may be an issue. And uh, one of the largest competitors to line regeneration of any sort that you're going to see is transistor and resistor. Um, and I believe um, the biggest competition is really education. It's not that the regen is overpriced, it's that the customer does not understand everything, the difference in between, in between the two, and the cost sa all of the cost savings going with a regen module. Um, as they say, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. And in most uh, industries that you see where they use transistors and resistors, um, you find it a lot in the lumber industry, steel industry uh, most of those guys that's what they have used and that's what they're very familiar with and it's kind of hard to get them to switch over to something new even though it makes a lot of sense um, so you you want to know as much about the region as possible so you can tell them the benefits of using a region okay with a region 
<clears throat> the difference in between the two, of course, um, the largest difference is return on investment. As you know, um, a resistor is virtually just a large heater. So all you are doing is burning the over voltage energy off as heat. I mean, in some cases, like I stated, in, where you have in lumber and in uh, steel and these other, where they have hazardous material floating around in the air where this is very combustible, where if heat hits it at the right temperature or spark or something, um, you can have a fire in the facility. Um, the region should be a no-brainer. But believe it or not, um, it is a very hard sell, even in there. Um, and here in the past few years, we have seen a lot of occasions where our reps, our distributors, have went in and told them about our region modules and, uh, you know, told them the same thing, but we don't get a call from them until they have that fire. Um, but that is a very big selling point. If you're dealing with someone with hazardous materials, then the region should be a big selling point. The other, the other um, selling point of a region as far as physically is the physical size of a region. Um, I'm going to be releasing here in, a, in the next week um, a pamphlet listing a comparison in between each one of our region modules and a comparable resistor and transistor package. So if you have a 30 horsepower region module which is 100% continuous rated I'm going to do that versus 100% continuous rated 30 horsepower uh, resistor, which in every case you're going to see the resistor is two times larger. So the footprint size is a huge selling point. You have to have a special place to put this very large resistor um, outside of the way. You have to mount it. That, that causes more wire. You have to run the wire to wherever that resistor is going to be mounted. In most cases, the smaller mounting size of these regions, you can mount them in the same panel as the drive. So it's very local and easy for the maintenance guys to use. It can be mounted in the motor, motor control center if need be. Um, so that is a very large um, selling point. And for facilities that have a lot of resistors. If you ever walk into a facility and they've got resistors on almost every drive, that is a major heat loss problem. So they have to solve the heat problem in that facility with air conditioning. You also need to factor the air conditioning losses into the savings of the region. So once you factor all of these once you get all of these factors in the savings of the region, it is a no-brainer, but it is up to you to put those, um, put all of those factors out there so they can really see the difference in what they will be saving moving over to a region module. All right, we'll move on to the next slide. And now we're going to get into um, some of the applications that we're, we have uh had a lot of success with in uh, in the past and uh, now that we're having success with currently. One of the uh, larger applications that you uh, will see us work with with our region is centrifuge applications. Um, just about any centrifuge that you are dealing with, larger centrifuge that you're dealing with, um, they are high inertia loads and you are going to have a very long coast to stop on a centrifuge so it really doesn't matter what you're what you're doing these uh, centrifuges since their desail time is normally over a minute so even if they're only stopping this uh, centrifuge two or three times a day the region the region duration is going to be considered a continuous process. Um, anything over 60 seconds when resistors is going to be considered continuous duty. So if they go and get a quote for their uh, centrifuge application, they're going to have to get a continuous duty region. We have a lot of success with region OEMs and any customer who is uh, forced to use region uh, centrifuges. So uh, 
if you're dealing with um, wastewater uh, plants, that uh, feel, that industry, they have to use a lot of centrifuges. Um, if you're dealing with uh, anyone who is separating uh, materials, waste materials from a water solution, you're going to be dealing with centrifuges. And also one of the uh, cooler applications that I've had in the last year, um, Dole Foods actually were using centrifuges to dry their their fruits or lettuce. So they would put they would run their lettuce through a wash cycle. Uh, when it would come out of their wash cycle, they would dump it into all of these centrifuges that looked exactly like this. Um, you you have a smaller version of it if you have a crisper at your house, a lettuce crisper, and they had man, I don't know how many cycles they were running per hour. It was like a five minute cycle, and this thing was switching speeds constantly, um, and was a great application. They had 50 of these in their facility. So, um, <clears throat> as I've stated, during the centrifuge process, the uh, drive will be required to go through rapid motion changes uh, that causes overhauling conditions. And you will see this a lot. There, of course, are different types of centrif centrifuges. The first centrifuge that was pictured was a vertical centrifuge. Um, this is a solid bowl decanter that you will see used in uh, a lot of your wastewater plants uh, that uh, will be cleaning um, up your drinking water in different facilities. In this case, the drum spins faster than an auger. So your auger is on the out on your on your outside here spinning, and um, your auger on the and your drum on the in the, your auger rather is going through right here spinning quicker than your drum. So your drum on the outside is holding the uh, waste, and then your auger comes through and is separating the right waste here where it's discarded. Um, you also can use regen here with these type of centrifuges. Um, I think one of our larger customers with these types is Heinkel fil filtering. So if you have anyone in your area who is a uh, centrifuge manufacturer, OEM, or an end user, uh, you really want to get in contact because this is one of our larger portions of business with Regen. Uh, typical savings here at a 100 horsepower motor at 50% duty cycle for if they're operating it for 365 days at 24 hours a day at 11 cents. Your uh, cost savings per year will come up with $35,927.83. So those are very large savings per centrifuge if you have someone with five or six of those centrifuges in a facility. Our next here would be elevators. Um, of course, with an elevator, uh, you you are going to be motoring for a so-called half the time, and you will be regening for half the time. So during the lowering phase of of an elevator, that will be regen, and when they're raising the elevator, that it will be in motoring. Um, you do run into different types of applications here for duty cycles with elevators. It depends on where the elevator is at, what type of elevator it is. This is an elevator at a maintenance uh, facility where they're going to be using it more and more often. Um, so you will want to get that information, but elevators is another typical application. Um, we do business with Alamac and Heck and uh, Thyssen and Thyssen and Krupp, if you are familiar with those two. Um, another application is uh, Dyno Drive Solutions. Um, Dyno or test stands, we do a lot of business with them, whether it's uh, Regen, almost all, all Dynos are Regen. We do run into a few where they are going to be used in some weird test and they're not going to be, but almost 100% of these are going to be regen. 
a dyno acts as a motor that drives the equipment under test. So I'm sure all of you all are familiar with a uh, dyno for cars um, and the high inertia load that you would have dealing with a dyno for a car. Um, dealing with dynos in some cases, this is really a rare case for us that, that you have this standard dyno. Um, in most cases, where they're testing um, all-terrain vehicles or some different types of vehicles, or they might have even more than four. I'm, I'm dealing with a uh, guy right now who's going to be handling a three-axle, uh, a three-axle transfer truck, and he's actually going to have uh, four axles on this thing: the front and three rear axles. Um, so these systems tend to be common bus applications. Um, high speed chases, uh, changes, uh, extended deceleration times. One of our largest uh, customers it will be Burke Porter. Um, I, you might have a Burke Porter in your backyard. If you do, please go and say hello to him. Um, <laughs> if you have not already, you need to go say hello to them. Um, they are using bon Bonatron products, and they do need your support. We talk to them all the time. Uh, crane and hoist applications. I've talked about this the whole time. We've talked about regen, so I'm not going to beat a, a dead ho horse here. Um, the one thing that I will talk about, um, again, everything is variable. You want to talk to guys who are using uh, cranes that are high repetition, uh, meaning they are picking place. And so if they're somewhere where they are picking up a load and dropping off a load, every they're just doing this over and over and over and over. Those are the guys who are going to just eat a region up and be a quick sale for you. And if you have an application like this, like you see where they will have a, dr a drive on each one of these, um, it can come in very handy using the common uh, DC bus or the regen power supply. Um, recently, we've had some uh, questions about web handling. We do a lot of web handling here. Uh, web handling, print press, um, you name it, anywhere where you're dealing with a system where you have an unwinding roll and a winding roll application, um, this is great for common bus where one motor will be in region at all times and one motor will be motoring at all times. Uh, great for the integrator because it's a simplified installation when they use our common bus systems. And that's a, what I mean by direct payback they can just run the power from one back to the other and they know they're absorbing that energy and they're using it. Um, it's not a pie in the sky for them. Um, another industry that we've had a lot of success in 2015 and going in 2016 has been sawmills. Um, I've dealt with quite a few different customers and they like to use these on their pointer Planer saws and gang saws is where I have seen a lot of customers switching over to our regen applications. And another here is, like I stated before, is hazardous environment. Um, and in some cases, they will like to come and bust there. They might have some applications that are lower duty cycle. Um, and you want to find the guys, too, if you have a larger sawmill in your area. Um, they do have downhill conveyors there a lot where they're coming off with, with a very repetitive saw and they're running those uh they're running those planks down a conveyor belt and if they have a derail situation that is a horrible situation for the, for those guys they and they're always looking for a solution so in some cases this is a solution where where they have that derail situation where they might want to use the transistor and resistor also with that. And I'll open up for questions. That's the end of the presentation. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them right now.
Uh, we're always looking for uh, more n new applications. If you have any questions, if you want to know if we have ran into these applications, feel free to give me a, uh, a call or get, shoot me an email. Um, I'll answer your questions as best as possible. We'll ask around and see if someone else has ran into the application. Um, we'll be happy to help you. I thank everyone for dropping in with us here. Um, and if there's anything that we can do for you, feel free to reach out to me. You all have a great day.